How's it going Marvel Champions fans? I am Dylan from All You Can Board and today I've got a special kind of Marvel Champions video. I'm going to be breaking down my top five most fun heroes. You've seen a lot of videos from me that are reviews on uh, heroes that have been released or previews on ones that are upcoming. This is a little bit more of a fun uh, video because I'm actually waiting for Scarlet Witch to come in. I would have been normally filming the Scarlet Witch uh, review and releasing that, but unfortunately I just don't have Scarlet Witch. So I'm praying to the Marvel Champions gods that that shows up in the next few days and I'll be able to put that video out. But in the in the meantime, I want to bring you guys this video because I think fun is a very subjective term. Uh, obviously, what I find most fun is going to be different than what other people find fun based on their play styles and you know what you get enjoyment out of with Marvel Champions. But there might be some of you interested on which heroes I prefer to play or which ones I would jump to play given the opportunity. So I'm going to break those down for you. And again, just preface the fact these are my personal opinion. I know that there's going to be some differences out there. And I would actually love to hear from you what your favorite heroes are and a little bit of the reasons why I love having those discussions. I think this game is a ton of fun. I have so much fun playing it. And I have even... Even I, I want to say even more fun discussing it and talking about it with people theories and, and you know strategies uh, and what everyone gets out of it. So, without further ado, let's jump into my top five most fun Marvel Champions heroes. All right, so kicking things off with my number five most fun Marvel Champions hero, that is going to be Captain America, Steve Rogers. Um, now, I know that in the community, it is almost widely uh, accepted or considered that Captain America is one of the strongest, if not the strongest uh, hero in the game. Um, that's not the reason he's on this list. I'm not, I'm not ranking this based on strength level. So if you were expecting him to be higher because of his strength level, that's not the criteria I'm using. It's just the fun I have while playing. Obviously, arguably, it's hard not to be fun when you're just crushing things uh, and, and, and you have a powerful hero to play with. It's going to be more fun. He slots in here because a lot of the cards that he has and the functionality of them just really gels with the play style that I appreciate in Marvel Champions. So I'm going to go through some standout cards and kind of explain why these ones elevate him to be one of my uh, favorite heroes. So we'll start with a uh, Super Soldier Serum. Uh, for those who don't know, this card is a two-cost upgrade. Exhaust Super Soldier Serum, generate a fist resource. There's a couple of these in the, in the deck, I believe, I think it's two. Um, cards like this, when you can, especially when they're uh, not very expensive to be able to get them out, it just gives you more possibilities on your turn. The more you're able to generate resources or, you know, in a, in a whole other mechanic, draw cards, for instance, the more capabilities and possibilities you have. And that is always more fun. Having more things to do, more strategies to consider, more ways you can do your turn where, you know, you can play these three cards and exhaust these as, re or suspend these as resources to do so, or flip that and say, I'm going to use this as a resource and I'm going to play this card instead. Those type of decisions is what makes Marvel Champions so much fun for me personally. I love having to you know agonize over whether I'm making the right call or I should be playing this card instead the more resources I can generate the more cards I can draw the more possibilities I'm being given that's why it's more fun so even though it doesn't seem like you know uh, a, a standout card in terms of uniqueness because lots of uh, characters have the ability to generate res resources having two of them in the deck no restriction being able to put both of them out into play um, is obviously a huge huge bonus and just yeah like I said gives you more possibilities another card is shield block this one is when you would take any amount of damage exhaust Captain America's shield to prevent all that damage and it's a zero cost event um if you can eliminate all damage coming your way preventing all that damage um it opens up way more opportunities for you to just go all, go all out in your turn, have a whole ton of fun, because you know that on your, the villain's turn, you're not completely immune. There could be cards that come up from the encounter deck that could really throw a wrench in your plans, but being able to prevent a huge swing on you from the villain or from a minion or whatever the case may be, um, just allows you to have a lot more fun on your turn without the repercussions you would normally suffer from just going all in, uh, so to speak, and leaving yourself uh, vulnerable to, to whatever the, the villain's gonna dish out. So having a card like that uh, in the deck just gives you way more potential to just have a lot of fun on your turn. Um, another one being Shield Toss. Uh, zero, another zero cost. These zero costs are obviously a ton of fun because you have no restrictions to play them usually. Uh, this one has one which is just discarding cards. So it's zero cost, discard X cards from your hand, then return Captain America's shield from play to your hand, deal four damage to the end to X enemies, basically on the amount of cards you discarded. So um, I should have mentioned a big element of Captain America is his shield. So having um, Captain America's shield in play and being able to utilize it for different cards um, is a lot of the functionality, a lot of the fun that comes with Captain America and it makes him feel very thematic. Um, his alter ego side actually allows you during setup to search your deck and discard pile or discard pile. It'll obviously just be the, the deck unless you've mulliganed it. Um, force uh, Captain America's shield upgrade and add it to your hand. 
Um, so you're always going to have Captain America Shield in your starting hand, and you're going to be playing it, and then it, it obviously uh, works in conjunction with a lot of cards like Shield Toss. So you're returning the shield from play to your hand, which means you're going to have to play it again on a future turn, but dealing four damage to a whole bunch of enemies, especially if you just spend your whole turn doing that, it might seem like a waste of a turn, not a waste of a turn, it's definitely not a waste of a turn, but just, you know, a less interesting turn if that's all you're doing. But doing four damage to, to you know, a whole bunch of stuff on the board is always going to feel super, super sweet. Um, so an awesome card. Every time I play it, I, I have a smile on my face. Um, and then lastly, uh, we have Heroic Strike. Again, not one that necessarily does anything super unique. Every A lot of heroes, not every hero, has a really powerful attack uh, card in their um, starting hero cards. But this one for three costs, deal six damage to an enemy, and if you pay for this card with a fist resource, stun that enemy. Um, six damage for three is an awesome uh, amount. Obviously not the best we've seen. We've seen other cards that exceed that, but a great baseline. But being able to stun for just having paid a fist resource, which depending on the aspect you're playing, can be very, very simple to do. Um, a constant stun with a huge hit is a ton of fun to execute, and it just feels really good when you do so. And then of course the last thing I can't uh, not mention is uh, his uh, Captain America's uh, ability card or ability on his card, which is I can do this all day. Action, discard one card from your hand to ready Captain America. You can only do that once per round, but any hero, you'll, you'll know this based on the other cards that are in here as well, but any hero that has the option to ready itself again on its turn and do more things with its base abilities, I find super interesting. I know not everyone necessarily finds, you know, using your, your base abilities as interesting as playing cards from your hand. But for me, just constantly readying heroes um, or finding new ways to ready them to be able to accomplish more stuff, I always uh, get a lot of enjoyment out of. So hit that being his base ability, me being able to do that every turn if I wish, um, along with all these cards I've mentioned, is just uh, a few of the many reasons why Captain America is number five on this list. I will just point out, uh, I'm gonna point this out for every hero, uh, which aspects I enjoy playing them at the, as the most. I won't get too into that. I think that could be a separate video in and of itself. But personally, when I play Captain America, the ones I have the most fun playing are Leadership, which I know is a really popular one for, for Captain America to play and thematically makes a whole ton of sense, uh, getting a whole bunch of allies into play with him leading them. Um, and Protection. I think that he has baseline, a lot of uh, fun protection abilities. And protection is an aspect that, um, you know, even me personally, um, I undervalue a lot. I always play the other ones first, or at least for a long while I was playing the other ones first and kind of uh, forgetting about protection. So anytime I can utilize protection in a way that I find exciting and and, and fun, um, I just, I, I, I love it because it's just taking something that I haven't played enough of and rediscovering it and finding new ways to make it fun. So Captain America, number five on the list. Let's jump into number four. Okay, number four on my list for most fun Marvel Champions heroes is a newer hero, and that is Wasp. Uh, so Wasp, I don't know yet. I haven't really done enough uh, poking around the community to see what people's feelings are on Wasp. Obviously, when a new hero comes out, everyone is a little bit more excited and, and more uh, positive about it uh, and is willing to overlook some of the negatives. I, I'm guilty of that a lot when a new hero comes out. So I don't know how much, now that she's been out for a while, people have slotted her in in terms of, you know, how much they like to play the hero or power level. But me personally... I think what draws me to Wasp so much is the same thing that draws me to another hero in the game that that might might pop up on this list um, is the three the three hero um, or not three hero forms three forms two hero forms one alter ego form um, it's it could be viewed as gimmicky I just personally think it's such a cool mechanic and it visually looks great when you do it on the table and also just juggling between. Uh, two different hero forms and an alter ego form makes for more interesting decisions. You're not just deciding, oh, when do I switch to alter ego or when do I switch to hero, which is something that you are deciding for all the heroes in the game. You have a new uh, wrench in that that you're now figuring out is which hero form should I switch into? Uh, at what point should I switch into them? There's cards you can utilize that'll give you a free switch and you can kind of do that, do something and switch back or switch to our alter ego. There's so many more possibilities and ways to execute your turn and different orders you can do your turn that all that decision decision making is something I just love about Marvel Champions. I'm the kind of player that even if I make a wrong decision and I if I can look back and say, oh, you know what, if I had gone to giant form first, done this, then gone to tiny form uh, and realize that mistake, 
that is fun to me and exciting because it makes me a better player and it makes me um, reconsider things on the next time those kind of type of um, situations arise. And that's just all the fun for me in Marvel Champions. So Wasp's number four. Let's jump into my some of my standout cards and the reasons why Wasp is on this list. Uh, first one being Ant-Man Ally. I'm a huge fan of allies in this game. I think a lot of people are. Even if they're not always super powerful, just sometimes having um, you know a familiar ally or a character I'm a big fan of show up is really exciting to me. Ant-Man in this case, I actually think this is a really solid hero. The flexibility, um, it's a four cost for, for three health. It's a two uh, thwart, two attack. But having the flexibility that whether you're in giant form or whether you're in tiny form, it gets a boost uh, to its thwart or attack is is great. And being able to you know say, I really need the extra thwart or I need the extra attack. And having that come into your decision on which form you're going to put Wasp into is just another thing you have to consider. And, and again, more strategic thinking that you get to be doing, which is, again, something I really enjoy. So Ant-Man is a really cool ally I enjoy. Uh, another one that is this isn't the only deck it shows up in um and it might be a card that you know is just glossed over as oh it's another type of resource card but that's pin particles the reason i like this card is because it does different things in different forms um you really have to consider when to use it and what you're most needing like there, there are going to be times when you are low on health and you could be switching to alt alter ego to heal but if you happen to have pin particles in your hand suddenly you're deciding should i go to giant form so that i can just get a quick heal with pin particles but stay active in the fray and what i'm doing and those type of decisions and risk taking is a really uh, something that i really really enjoy but then also again being able to go to tiny form draw an extra card potentially facilitate uh, better plays or new plays or new strategies is another thing you have to consider so pin particles opens up a lot of possibilities that end up being very fun for me. Um, another one is Wasp Sting. Another card that's flexible with both results I think are really uh, just feel good to do. It's a two cost event, has a, two hero actions. Um, if you are in giant form, deal a total of four damage, split how you choose. And if you're in uh, tiny form, deal five damage to an enemy. So obviously five damage for two isn't overly powerful we've seen cards that do more damage than that um, or even more at three costs for instance um, but again the flexibility is saying if i'm in giant form i can split this across a whole bunch of uh, ultron uh, bots or i can split this across a couple you know pesky minions in play that have been bothering me that both have two health or something um, but then also being able to flip and say i just want to do a big hit of five onto something and crush it um, i like having that flexibility and there's often times in my hand where i want to do both um, which for me in board games in general and in more Marvel Champions, wanting to do more things than you can is always a recipe for success in terms of how much I'm enjoying a game because the more you want to do and you can't do it makes you want to play it again to try different things or think back on how you should have th done things differently. Wasp Sting uh, opens up a whole ton of possibilities for that. Pinpoint Strike, this is an obvious one. It is just a powerhouse of a card. Three costs, you're dealing seven damage to an enemy, uh, but if you're in tiny form, it becomes eight damage with overkill. This card always feels phenomenal to use again nothing super unique necessarily in in terms of its its ability it's a, just a big hit card the most unique thing about it is that it adds overkill to it um but facilitating and figuring out how to end it up in tiny form to be able to do a huge hit of eight and overkill so potentially doing uh, a bunch of damage to a minion or minimal damage to a minion and overkilling onto the villain always feels good there's three of them in this deck i believe which means you're constantly having them up out you're constantly wanting to draw into them to be able to do these huge hits um it's one of the reasons i enjoy playing wasp a lot um so pinpoint strike is a big big card for me and one of the reasons on this list uh the last one i want to talk about is rapid growth this is a one cost hero interrupt when you use one of your hero's basic powers so that's thwart attack or defend um, change to giant form and get plus two to that power instead so Rapid Growth is just another um, card that plays into the, the flipping of the hero to multiple forms. So being able to get that free flip into giant form um, and also a boost to one of your basic attacks, there's so much decision making there, whether you're using it for defense, whether you're using it for attack or thwart, uh, when you're using it on your turn, whether you're flipping into giant form after you've already done a flip or whether you're after you're in giant form and do this, you're flipping out of giant form. It makes the turns uh, seem so precise and there's so much going on that it's just a ton of fun for me to figure out where I slot in rapid growth in this sequence of events that I'm trying to complete. So I personally have a lot of fun using that card. Um, and just overall, everything about Wasp and, and its play style just speaks to me and uh, how much I enjoy just having multiple options on my turn. In terms of aspects, um, there's multiple aspects that work great with Wasp, but the one that I enjoy the most is clearly Aggression. She's built with these possibilities with Pinpoint Strike, for instance, to just have these huge swings of turns. Adding in the Aggression set of cards means that Wasp's going to have turns where she deals so much damage that it just 
cannot not feel good uh, to ha have ended your turn dealing, uh, you know, half the, the villain's da or full health is removed from your one turn, or you've cleared the board of, min of minions because of uh, her giant ability to be able to spread damage around. There's, there's so much potential there, so aggression for me personally is my most fun, and that is Wasp number four. Let's move on to number three. Okay, my number three most fun Marvel Champions hero is actually a hero that comes in the base set uh, of Marvel Champions, and that is Iron Man. Um, so Iron Man is probably one of the most unique heroes, uh, if not the most unique hero on my list here. Um, and that is because Iron Man starts with a hand size of one, which is absolutely atrocious. I agree. Um, that in alter ego form, he still has a hand size of six, but in Iron Man specifically, hand size of one. So you might be thinking, why is this really, really poor hand size uh, hero on my list? And that is because Iron Man's entire um, theme and what you're doing with Iron Man is trying to build up his armor. And every time you build up the armor, you're going to be increasing your hand size and also increasing the overall power level of Iron Man. When you have the entire armor set built, if you're able to do that, you have probably you have probably the most powerful hero in the game, one of the most powerful heroes in the game, but it takes a while to build up to that. But that gameplay of building up the armor and having this sort of, it almost feels like a side quest you know, when you're playing a game with Iron Man. You have this main, main quest of trying to take down the villain, trying to win the game, but you have this side quest that you personally are accomplishing of trying to build up your armor suit, and that's also helping you and facilitating you on your main quest. I love that aspect with Iron Man. It also fits in thematically in so many ways. You know, Tony Stark being focused on his own thing uh, and being somewhat you know self-centered while also uh, while also not, you know, being the guy who will make the self-sacrifice and all this kind of stuff. Um, it plays in like that. It plays in thematically with how important Iron Man's armor is um, to the, the character and to Tony Stark himself. But just it's so much fun. They're having this goal and, you know, seeing yourself increase in power level, almost like a character leveling up in an RPG, feels so great. It's so fulfilling in a way that most heroes... I. I I don't achieve that same level of fulfillment because there's not this specific goal I'm trying to accomplish. So that being said, let's go over some of uh, the cards that I really, really enjoy in Iron Man besides the whole ar armor aspect. One of them is Repulsor Blast. Uh, this is a one cost event, hero action, deal one damage to an enemy and discard the top five cards of your deck. Out of those five cards you've discarded, every lightning resource is going to increase the damage by two. This card just feels great when you, when you really uh, you know, hit the home run on it. Um, there's been times, that, again, it's not always going to happen. Very few times is probably going to happen. But there's been times where you draw, you know, into either five energy resources, or if you're lucky, you draw into an energy card or resource card that has double uh, lightning on it, um, which increases this even more. So you can have these huge, huge swings for a single cost. It's a one cost card that just feels so great when you pull them off. Yes, there's that RNG element to it where sometimes you're going to draw one or you're going to draw none and you're going to feel absolutely awful. But again, I, I enjoy a light bit of RNG as long as it's not the only thing driving that character or that game. Um, having this one card be that RNG swing and being able to also build your deck in a way that minimizes the RNG or swings it in your favor by putting more lightning resources in, having that level of control um, you know, doesn't make it feel as bad. Um, you will still get the unlucky turns, but it's not quite as bad when you have control over it. Um, so Repulsor Blast is one I absolutely adore and love playing. Uh, another one is Supersonic Punch. Uh, you might have noticed by now I just love cards that hit huge uh, because it always feels good to feel like you're doing a lot in your turn to take down the villain with that being your main goal. Supersonic Punch deals four damage to an enemy for two, but you deal eight damage instead if you have the aerial trait. Again, one of the goals here is to build up Iron Man's armor. When you build up his uh, boots, you will get the aerial trait. I think it's I think it's the boots there gives you gives you the option to have the aerial trait. Um, if you do that, you're going to be dealing eight damage for two with this card, which always feels great. So again, it feels like you've accomplished a goal, you've reached this pinnacle, and now you're rewarded with a, a powered up supersonic punch. So that always feels awesome. Um, the arc reactor, you already know from the other cards I've mentioned, I love being able to ready your hero and do more with them. Arc reactor just gives you another ready every single turn. It's a two cost upgrade, stays in play permanently, exhaust it, ready Iron Man. Way more possibilities, opens up a whole uh, bunch of other avenues for the character. Um, and overall, just all the armor pieces, the rocket boots, the Mark V helmet, um, the Mark V armor giving you plus six hit points. Um, by the end, if you've boosted, uh, all, gotten all your armor in play and really completed the entire armor set, you're going to have a ton of hit points, you're going to have a ton, a big hand size, you're going to have a ton of power potential. It just feels so good when you actually achieve all that in a game. It's a level of fun that you don't necessarily get from any other hero. It just means you have to work for it. But that sense of gratification and that sense of having earned it is just 
does isn't beat by any hero because again having that side quest esque goal is something that's very unique to Iron Man. So. Iron Man number three, I think, definitely uh, deserves the spot for me personally. And again, it comes in the base set, so you get Iron Man just by having bought Marvel Champions. In terms of aspects, um, it's Iron Man's a weird one. Like I actually enjoy playing Iron Man at most aspects. Some are obviously weaker than others. I think Justice is one I really enjoy with Iron Man and Aggression, obviously. Aggression being one of my favorite aspects. If not my favorite aspect, I end up trying to try it out with every hero. So uh, Aggression, Justice are the ones I gravitate towards the most. But that is Iron Man number three. Let's jump into number two. Okay, my number two most fun Marvel Champions hero is actually the newest hero on the list, and that is Quicksilver. So I promise this isn't just me having you know the, the glossy eyes from it being a brand new hero. I played a lot of Quicksilver, and I did not make this decision lightly, but Quicksilver is just so much fun to play. Um, again, you know from based on what I've said in the other characters on this list, I personally just enjoy being able to ready a hero multiple times and feel like you're really overpowered or doing things you maybe shouldn't be doing because you're only supposed to be able to do it once normally, or, or sorry, use a hero once. Um, Quicksilver's entire persona is based on readying over and over and over again. So already it's speaking, it feels like it's speaking right to me uh, and the type of hero I wanna play. But again, there's this, Quicksilver has this other aspect that's kind of like Iron Man, where you're trying to build up his base abilities. Because he has, he's gonna be using them multiple times, starting with ones across the board, isn't necessarily where you want to be. So he has uh, a card for each of those, a thwart, attack, and defense boost in here that is, can be upgraded that you put into play. So you're trying to get those out to give it twos across the board because that essentially gives you four on each one because you're using them twice at baseline. But again, there's a whole bunch of other cards in here that allow him to do some pretty crazy things. And when you pull them off, it always elicits smiles and laughs and, and you know, um, jaw drops around the table for how uh, how much Quicksilver can actually accomplish when you get those perfect turns. So let's jump into the, some of the cards I really enjoy. Uh, first one, obviously, always be running. There's a whole bunch of them in his base deck, so you're going to be seeing a lot of them. It seems very simple, one cost, ready Quicksilver, but for a character that just wants to be ready over and over again, getting multiple de of these in your turn or using them in conjunction with some other cards I'm going to talk about right away makes this card just the staple. This is the most important card I would venture in your deck because it allows you to do everything you want to do with Quicksilver. Having the turns where you end up with a base, you know, base four attack and you have three always be runnings in your hand or something and you're able to play them all, doing 12 damage just on your base attacks feels so broken. Um, and it's not because your other heroes can do more damage than that when they start using cards and you've probably used your whole hand just to do this. But it feels broken in the sense that he shouldn't be doing that so many times, um, exhausting ready and exhausting ready. It feels great. It looks great. It, it's a ton of fun to do. Uh, one of my favorite cards to use in the deck, always be running. Uh, friction resistance, three cost upgrade. Don't sleep on this card. It's honestly, in terms of all the upgrades that are in here, I personally think it's the one you most want to try to get in your opening hand uh, or mulligan into um, or get out if you have it in your hand immediately. Three costs after you ready Quicksilver, you ready this card as well, and you can exhaust it to generate a fist resource. This is invaluable. If if you have a, if you have always runnings in your hand and you have this in play, you're essentially getting all of those always be runnings for free because every time you ready Quicksilver, you're ready in this and you get another resource that you can use. And the always be running only costs one. So this ends up being a way for you to facilitate and pay for your always be runnings. It's a way for you to do more in your turn and give you more options in your hand. Um, Great card. It's essentially always going to generate you two resources a turn uh, for three costs, which is fantastic. Um, one of my favorite cards in the deck. Um, the most powerful card in the deck by far, maximum velocity, uh, two cost event. You get plus two thwart, plus two attack, and plus two defense until the end of the round. On Quicksilver, when he can do those multiple times, especially if you have always Brennan's in your hand, uh, unbelievable. And I haven't even mentioned the fact that, uh, so because this card works until the end of the round, it also lasts until the villain's turn. Quicksilver is one of the best protection uh, heroes in the game, if not the best protection hero in the game. Because he gets a free defend every turn because he'll automatically ready uh, that first time he uses it, having maximum velocity or having boost your defense means that he can stay in hero form very for very long periods of time and reliably defend on the villain's turn and still stay active again on your turn, which gives you it makes you feel like you have to take less downtime and you're just always on the offensive or you very or even when you go uh, on on the you know on the defensive it doesn't feel as hindered as some other heroes do. So maximum velocity is great on the offensive and it's great on the villain's turn. It's an all around phenomenal card. The last one I want to touch on because it's some, somewhat overlooked I think sometimes is Serval Industries um, exhausting it. It's a one cost support exhausting it shuffling to two Quicksilver cards from your discard pile into your deck, you 
Quicksilver's uh, hero cards always be running maximum velocity are so good that when you get low in your deck or if you have you know like one card left in your deck and you're able to use several industries you're facilitating and and dictating what your next hand is going to be and if that can always be maximum velocity with uh, and always be running for instance you're just going to always have a huge turn whenever you're able to pull that off and several industries allows you to do it more often by constantly putting those cards back in you do have to go to alter ego form so you have to figure out how to you know pull that off and still pull off what you want to do with quicksilver but it's a very good card that you shouldn't uh skip over overall quicksilver is such a fun hero and in terms of aspects my favorite aspect by far to play with quicksilver is protection uh, which also uh, helps them land this spot on the list because Again, protection is one I don't play a lot of, and it's opened up so many more avenues to me, and it's made me appreciate that aspect even more. But being able to reliably defend without it feeling like you're taking a, a hit on your offensive capabilities makes him such a strong hero and so much fun to play. So that is Quicksilver, brand new hero. If you haven't checked him out, I would highly recommend it. Let's jump on to number one. Okay, so my number one hero, and I flip-flopped between this one and number two a few times, but ultimately I had to give it to Ant-Man. Um, Ant-Man, for a lot of the same reasons that I loved Wasp, um, is just such a fun strategic hero to play because of all the form changes you can do with the three forms instead of two. There's a lot of fun I get out of being able to decide whether I should be in giant form or tiny form or specifically when to jump to each of those forms, especially because you have cards in the deck that are going to facilitate you jump into those forms for free in addition to the one form change you normally get. So you're going to be flip-flopping back and forth and accomplishing a whole bunch of stuff that even though you might be playing the same amount of cards you do with other heroes, it feels like you've put this uh, puzzle together saying, well, if I go to giant form here and then I go to tiny form after that, then it allows me to do these cards in this order, which will accomplish this. And so that th that is just this level of satisfaction that a lot of other heroes can't deliver because you're intricately doing things in a certain order. And I love that play style with Ant-Man. Let's jump into a couple of the cards that I specifically really like. One of them being giant stomp. Um, it's a three cost event. You can only play it if you're in giant form again. So you have to decide when you're going to go to giant form or, or will you, um, Hero attack, deal one damage to each minion and then eight damage to another enemy. So the, again, you read this card, it's basically just, you know, uh, put an end to Ultron. Um, the, can potentially defeat all the, the bots in play and do eight damage to Ultron. But even outside of that villain specifically, very powerful card. You're, you feel like you're accomplishing a lot and you are accomplishing a lot with one card. So it feels really good to get control of the board, especially if you're playing solo and you don't have someone else to rely on for that. But even in a multiplayer game, you've contributed what you need to by doing a whole bunch and set your, your um, ally up for success. So Giant Stomp's a really great card. I won't get too deep into Pim Particles because I've talked about with Wasp, but again, facilitating uh, the ability with changing different forms to now also get this extra boost saying, if you're in this form, you do this, and if you're in this form, you do this, with draw a card or heal two, um, allows you to really decide, do I want the one card draw? Do I want the heal? Uh, the heal can allow you to stay in hero form longer and not have to go to alter ego. Lots of possibilities there. Um, Ant-Man's helmet is essentially a permanent pin particles. It's a three cost upgrade, and after you change the giant form, heal two. After you change the tiny form, draw one. But that'll stay permanently in play. Super good. I can't understate this card. Getting this out early is crucial if you have it in your hand. Um, again, all those heals will go a long way to making you not have to go to alter ego. You can stay and be active and be on the offensive uh, in hero form and be getting the heroes. But the card draw as well to open up possibilities and things you can do on your turn. Can't understate that enough. What a great card. Army of Ants seems very basic on the surface. You're just, you know, if you're in tiny form, exhaust ants deal a single damage. But because there are multiple of those Army of Ants in this deck, three to be exact, um, if you get all of them out, you're doing three damage every turn just by exhausting these. And you're also facilitating Hive Mind, which specifically removes two threat, but an additional threat for every Army of Ants in play. So you could be removing five threat for two, which makes them an amazing uh, justice hero as well. Um, so Hive Mind's really great. My favorite card by far is Resize. Zero cost, change to your other hero form and draw a card. Insanely powerful. Because Ant-Man is based around wanting to change forms and because that opens up so many strategic possibilities for you, at zero cost, also giving you a card draw is just, it's a positive on top of a positive. And again, opening up those strategic avenues on different things you can decide and what order you do things in is what makes Ant-Man so interesting. Resize just gives you way more possibilities for that. Um, he has so many great cards. I can't overstate um, how much I love this hero. Personally, for aspects, 
I have the most fun playing Ant-Man in Justice. I feel like as a Justice hero, he's able to be so powerful a threat removal that you really feel like you have a handle and a grasp on what you're trying to accomplish in your group as the threat removal hero. But he can also just jump in with the cards like Giant Stomp and do a whole bunch of damage or pick off minions with Army of Ants. So he feels very versatile. I love Ant-Man. He well more than more than earns is this top uh, spot on my list. But again, Quicksilver is pretty close. They're both very great. And that's it. Those are my top five most fun Marvel Champions heroes. Let me know what you think. Do you agree with my list? Which ones would you slot in? What are your top five most fun heroes? And give me some reasons why I'd love to discuss that with you in the comments. Again, this is just my personal list. These are not the most powerful heroes in the game necessarily, just the ones that if I'm gonna play a game of Marvel Champions, I am most inclined to jump to one of these heroes. Um, I love them. I hope you guys do too. Um, but if not, let me know why. Tell me which heroes you like. I'd love to hear from you. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing so you can always see all the Marvel Champions videos as soon as they get released. Um, and we'd love to also just have you be a part of our community. Leave a like, leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.